It's a real privilege to be here. So thank you very much for the invitation. And it is a, a very hairy topic. Um, and if, I don't know if you cast your mind back, I don't I think it's Conroy, Senator Conroy tried to introduce legislation into the federal parliament to ban X-rated pornography on the internet. X-rated, it's not, this is X-rated. And he was shouted down by the civil libertarians and it never happened. And that's what we're up against. Um, I think back then uh, the research wasn't there. The research is there now and it's increasingly there of the damage that uh, pornography is having on our children. I think if we look in the old days, and I'm an old chook so I can say that, um, it used to be available through Canberra and you had to send, go and order it or something online and it was delivered to your home or, or it came in little magazines that men used to hide under their beds um, and it wasn't X-rated. Right, well, not, I don't know, but I don't think it was X-rated. Maybe there was some that was X-rated. I don't think X-rated was allowed to be sold even back then. Um, I don't know enough about this topic to be really talking about that except what I hear around the place. But now, X-rated material is like a common feed through the internet. So if you're talking about, and I'm really proud of the city for standing up to this, and I think if the city could do it, it will be here. Because you do have that culture here, you do have that sense of community, you have a slight, a little bit of not isolation, but you're an island, a little bit, you can be, and so you can do it, but it's going to take a mammoth effort from the whole community. I think when you talk about pornography, uh, I think we need to, for me, I'm always talking about child protection. Because if I talk about child protection, then I'm not talking to the adults in this room who are adults and, and mature adults and can make their own decisions and understand the decisions that you're making. But when I'm speaking, and I'm speaking on behalf of children, they don't have that, that cognizant maturity. They don't understand what's happening. When we give them a, an iPad or a phone as a babysitter, and this stuff pops up on Barbie, they don't know what they're looking at. Sex offenders have been using pornography forever to groom children, to normalise this behaviour. They show it to them that, you know, children are, I, if I can speak frankly, I don't think there's many children in the room here. Um, children are sexual beings, okay? So your body is going to react in ways that is almost uncontrollable. Um, so it's confusing for children what's going on. But what's going on, and I've just got a couple of, um, a couple of uh, quotes here I've, I've just pulled out for this 15 minute this morning. Acts of a sexual nature that are often this is what's happening, right? This is the result of this. Because kids are seeing stuff, the, uh, they're seeing stuff on the internet. They think it's normal. No one's telling them it's not. Has anyone in here sat down and said anal sex with your, with your partner is not normal? Like that's not, you don't have to do that. But this isn't part of, if, if girls are not behaving in the way that the, that the uh, industry um, is portraying that they should behave, then they're seen as frigid, they're marginalised, they're picked on. Boys, the pressure on boys. Um, to actually perform like these people are performing. And it is a performance. At the end of the day, these people are actors. They're being paid. And the more degrading and the more disgusting their behaviour, the more they get paid. That's what it is. And we are consuming it. And our children are consuming it. And the ramifications for them are enormous. And that, those statistics are coming out uh, more and more and more. So the young people now have unrealistic attitudes about sex. Um, maladaptive attitudes towards relationships. This is our future we're talking about. A greater acceptance of sexual permiss permissiveness, less progressive gender roles, gendered aggression and a greater belief that women are sex objects. Flood and Hamilton back in 2003, so this was now, you know, some time ago, confirmed a correlation between frequent porn, porn watching and forcing girls to have sex, that means rape. This, this is with children 14, boys 14. What are we doing? Now the answer of course is technology. And while it brings with it lots of um, amazing things and yes, 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 even Bill Gates and Steve Jobs, I've got quotes from here, would not give their children under 14 a smartphone or a smart device, that they're on the record. They wouldn't do it. And yet we're doing it. We're giving mobile phones and internet connected devices as babysitters to three-year-olds, four-year-olds. It's like taking them to King's Cross 
ladies and gentlemen, putting them in King's Cross in the middle of the night, just driving them there, get out of the car, off you go, three hours later, come back and get them. And expect that no they've seen nothing, experienced nothing, and everything is as, as it was before you drop them off. Is that going to happen? It's not going to happen. And until I think there needs to be a, a and the research is gathering, but no one's got the courage. No one's got the courage that you've got here today, Mayor. No one has your courage. Congratulations to you. <laughs> Seriously, to, to step up and say our children are our future. If we don't nurture them, if we don't guide them and show them the right way, if we allow them to be corrupted by pedophiles, we are doing the job of the pedophiles. We are doing it for them. We don't have to, we don't, they don't have to groom them anymore. We're doing it for them in our lounge rooms. I've got a big booming voice. I probably don't need it. I've been told that once or twice. I'm even louder. I'll try and be quiet. Um, so the other one is that um, acts of a, of a sexual nature that are often now unenjoyable, degrading or violating for women and beca are becoming more normalised and more acceptable. So this is the cultural shift that's happening. Women are expected to perform, in, perform like, like, like actors. Men are expected to perform like actors. And if they don't, then they are marginalised and treated, uh, the, the peer pressure is enormous on them. This isn't fair. It's not fair on our kids, and it, it, it's not going to lead us to a healthy society. So at Bravehearts, my daughter was sexually assaulted when she was seven. Um, I used to do, I used to run national companies under a little stint of politics. But I can tell you, I can tell you this, I know, and she's great by the way, 30, he went to jail, she's 30, she's fabulous, she works at Bravehearts, and she's as passionate and as strong as I am on this. The thing is this, we have to focus on our children. We have to, the offender in our family was a family member, much loved family member, like seriously. But you have to make a decision, the child or the adult, the offender or the victim. And as tough as that is, and trust me, I know how tough that is, you have to choose your children. And that's what Toowoomba is doing. You are choosing your children. And it's tough because the question is, there's a genie out of a bottle. They've all got their phones. Can you take it? Can I take your phone off you when you're, when you're 14, 13, 12? What's going to happen? They're going to scream because they're already addicted. We've let it happen. Would you give your children the keys to the car at 10 and 12 years old and say, off you go? No. You wouldn't give your kids the keys to the car? You no know, way would you, because you know they don't have the, the, the training, they don't have the mental maturity in order to understand risk. They don't know risk, they don't, they're, 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 they're careless, right? Same thing is happening. We are feeding our children a lifetime of misery by giving them this device in their pocket, in their bedroom. Let them have their, their um, laptops at school, let them learn, no question about it. At home, just you know, turn the clock back almost. I sound, I'm almost sounding... And I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a uh, uh, stick in the mud. I understand children have to understand this world and how much benefit that the internet can bring to them. But why are we... When we know how much damage that it's doing them, and it's well documented, this is just changing lives, it's suicide, 47% up, 60%. You know, just the statistics are just... I could read them out, but it's, it's kind of... To suffice to say... The world is changing, and it's changing because of the internet, and a great part of that is our youth, and they are changing in ways that is not, that is not good for them. It, we've got suicide rates going through the ceiling. We've got depression going through the ceiling. Look at the stats. Look at the stats. Everyone's worrying about it. Government's worrying about the cost of these things to society. Well, hello. Parents have to step up to the plate and take some responsibility. Governments are too frightened to call for this because most, as you've probably noticed here in Toowoomba, most people will say, it's my right to watch porn and what are you saying? It's just rubbish. Yes, it is an adult's right. I, I, I'm not even going to go there. But it's not for children. This is not for children and we as adults can stop that access, we can stop that damage and we choose not to. That doesn't say much for us. And that's why I was really proud to come up here today and to add my voice to this, what is obviously a controversial campaign, and I'm not unused to controversy. Um, and I will go down fighting, because I will fight. I do want this nation to be the safest place in the world to raise a child, because it can be. That child sexual assault and harm is actually preventable 
and where we fail to prevent, you can heal from this with the right kind of support and the right kind of services and community attitudes. And it's the community attitude that has to change. We have to prioritise our children. I said this to the Prime Minister on Monday, I think it was, and I looked at him and I said, we need someone, finally we need leadership in this country that's going to put our children first. That has to, if it's no good for children, don't do it. Simple. It's simple as that little thing said. Simple. Um, so again, I say thank you. Um, I'm, uh, I, I'm really proud of Toowoomba uh, for doing, it's got a history, Toowoomba, with the, you know, the Toowoomba prep in the, old, in the old days, 20 years ago and all the rest of it. I think it's really, really awesome that you're standing up for your children in Toowoomba. I think it's absolutely amazing. And again, I applaud the Mayor and I thank you for your time.